This was a great study from 2019. Unfortunately, I don't think it got a lot of excitement or even appreciation in the world of orthopedics and low back pain, but nonetheless, it was performed and I think it provides a lot of interesting data in terms of cost specifically when it comes to low back pain. It is free online. It was published in 2019 in the Journal of Manual and Manipulative Therapy. It's a great read if you have 20 or 30 minutes to sit down and read it. The name of the study, The Cost Impact of a Quality Assured Mechanical Assessment in Primary Low Back Pain Care. And that word mechanical is referring to mechanical diagnosis and therapy, MDT, the McKenzie Method, and at the base of that is repeated movement testing. And they use the word quality assured because IMC is a clinic in Tallahassee. I went to work there for about five months and they make sure that their clinicians are performing repeated movement testing or MDT at a very high level. So they have their own internal standards for that clinic. But Donaldson et al. So Ron Donaldson was the primary author he was trained as an orthopedic surgeon. He later discovered repeated movement testing and MDT and devoted his career more to helping patient outcomes using MDT versus surgery. He wrote this book, Rapidly Reversible Low Back Pain in 2007. I've read it two or three times. It is an excellent read. It's more geared towards clinicians and people who work in medicine or especially in kind of the finances of medicine and it's not as geared towards the lay person. So going back a bit, in 2012, a large manufacturer analyzed their data. They'd already been using some clinicians who were quality assured with IMC and they wanted to see what different outcomes were for patients, especially in terms of money allocated. This manufacturing company is worldwide and they are self-insured. So it behooves them to get better care for their employees and their employees' dependents because if they get better care, that should result in better outcomes and not use things that are ineffective and therefore cost less. So they were curious about using MDT with their employees and their dependents. So they decided that they were going to look at the claims data of about 5,000 patients, so 5,036 individuals. And what they did with these individuals is give them the choice of community care, normal care, or mechanical care. And I don't think they phrased it like that. I think they offered them the choice of an in-house clinic, which the study mentions they historically did try to encourage for their employees and their dependents, probably because the in-house clinic did offer at that time already some cost savings. But they offered these patients the choice. 4,602 chose usual community care, called CC in the article, and 434 chose mechanical care, which is quality assured mechanical assessment. Now, what they did is they took patients with a complaint of low back pain, and the only exclusion criteria were fractures, dislocations, and infections. So to me, that's really, robust because sometimes people, you know, take away sciatica or take away spondylolisthesis or all these, and they may have taken away some spondylolisthesis, but um, they take away things that kind of are normal in the presentations of people with low back pain, like arthritis on the imaging finding. So they only took away those three in terms of exclusions. So people with primary low back pain are the ones who were studied for their claims data we're just looking at costs in this study. We're not looking at um, symptoms or range of motion or anything more clinical. We're just looking at the cost of the care for these patients over one year. They looked at 365 days. So that was the primary outcome, just the overall cost for a year. And when they analyzed it, the cost of the patients seeking mechanical care versus normal community care was about a 51% savings overall. And when they looked at some of the secondary outcomes, a few jump out at me, um, which is the imaging rates were about 50% down in those who had mechanical care, injection rates down about 39%, 
and surgery rates down 78%. And another finding was that even though they looked at the claims data for a year, they could see that after six months since the initial instigation of the care, 8% of mechanical care patients were still seeking care and 30% of community care patients were still seeking care. So the takeaway that you know is a little bit hypothetical, but it resonates with me, is that because patients were getting repeated movement testing that was quality assured, meaning the clinicians were being, you know, going to grand rounds if they were struggling with their patients' outcomes, and there was a lot of checks to make sure that the clinicians were doing repeated movement testing correctly. If patients were getting that, they had less cost to the system and they had less likely unnecessary injections, imaging, and surgery. And those things are expensive. And we do know from other articles in the research literature that imaging can be false positives and not tell you the cause. Injections can have no effect. Surgery can have no effect. So repeated movement testing as part of the diagnostic process, which is reliable because we've tested it with different clinicians using repeated movement testing around the globe and found that we can trust people who are highly trained in using repeated movement testing to come to the same conclusion in the majority of times. It's reliable and can give us data that really informs the best care for that patient. Does this patient have a directional preference? Is this patient's disorder dominated by inflammation and therefore an injection might be fruitful? Is this patient not responding and only peripheralizing, for example, and needs a consult with a surgeon? So mechanical care is what you learn when you study Robin McKenzie's books. Um, he wrote five textbooks with Stephen May. You learn MDT when you go to McKenzie Method courses. Um, and there are also the patient-centered books like Treat Your Own Back, Treat Your Own Neck, etc. So we can't make too many um, conclusions from this about the actual care, but we can make conclusions about the cost. And there's clearly decreased costs for people who went through repeated movement testing for their primary low back pain. And there are a lot of entities in the US that don't really care about decreasing costs, unfortunately, because you know, insurance gets a piece of the pie. So if the pie is bigger, you know, they get more money and institutions or medical networks, they don't mind making more money. So we need clinicians who are more geared towards obviously clinical outcomes at the core of it, patients getting better as fast as possible with the least amount of risk possible, possible. but that translates often to less cost because this newer technology that we're using, which is injections and surgeries and images, have not over the last few decades translated to better care. So what I would argue is we need to get better at diagnosing. And when all clinicians who see people with low back pain use these different diagnostic methods, palpation, special tests, functional tests, we're not coming to the same conclusions. And one way around that is to have clinicians learn repeated movement testing, which is reliable, have them learn it to a high level so that they can decide if we need special tests or decide if we need other types of care.